Hello, this is Techman88, and I've got a new type of quartz quarry. It uses a similar concept to a tunnel bore, where it'll shoot out the TNT and then launch it later after it's had a time to uh, for its fuse to run out. Uh, so in this way, I can blow up the TNT exactly in certain spots and gradually clear air out uh, the side of this mountain. And then the nice thing about doing it like this is that if I'm in survival mode, so now I can fly down and any quartz that's exposed, I can really easily see it. Uh, like right up here, like I can see it and I can land right there. So if you had like a vertical quarry, you wouldn't be able to land on it. So I was saying this is a lot like a tunnel bore. Uh, this is probably just a little bit more complicated than a tunnel bore, at least in terms of the timings. Uh, like in the case of a tunnel bore, they have one specific timing that gets the TNT in the perfect spot in front of the machine. But in this case, I wanted all sorts of different timings. And that's what you see happening here. Uh, like there's kind of this limestone wire going down to the end. Uh, and then there's another one down here. Um, so yeah, the top one that controls the TNT duper over here, that's going to throw a piece of TNT over here. And it's going to land on this trapdoor. And then it's going to get tossed out at different timings. So yeah, like a, a shorter timing that's going to let the TNT fall way down here. And then of course a longer timing, it's going to blow up closer to the machine. And I think I used 14 different timings, which was very convenient because I could just use an analog clock to do that. So basically when this line up here, it moves to the right, that's going to move both these observers behind this sticky piston and that's going to pull and push the uh, the TNT duper. So yeah, when it moves forward, it dupes the TNT, and then when it moves back, it's going to just retract the machine, and it won't uh, it won't dupe the TNT. And then the one down here uses a very similar thing, except I laid it out a little bit differently because of the space requirements. Um, so this observer is going to power the sticky piston down here, and that's again going to uh, pull and push the uh, the launcher here. And it's in its default state, it's going to be extended, so you can really easily move the machine over uh, for the next thing. And also one thing to note about the TNT placement is on a trapdoor, because uh, if you have like a full block here, the TNT is going to get stuck to it. Uh, ice block won't help. A trapdoor, for my testing, seems to be the best. Um, and then another thing is, you see I'm moving this observer way out of the way. There's actually a very tiny chance that the TNT can land with its corner like slightly over on this block and then it's going to get stuck on the observer like if it was in this position. So yeah, the observer moves over here, then the TNT launches. So the timing mechanism is all back here. Uh, this little bit of redstone, I tried to make it as small as possible. It's actually an analog counter. I decided not to use droppers because that uh, it seemed like that would be more complicated than this. Um, so the way you run this is you just hit a button. I've got a, a whole line down here so you could place more buttons if you wanted. And you would only have to build one of these machines like every hundred blocks or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is just going to count down on this line right here. Like this was signal strength 14, then it'll go down to 13. You saw that. Um, and it's going to put the signal into this uh, little fader clock. And um, then like when it turns on, it's going to activate this top line up here. And then when, it, when this analog clock turns off, it's going to activate this bottom line. And then eventually when that's done, it's just going to um, count on the timer and also put in the new signal. Just one more note on the timing mechanism. Uh, these up here, these fader clocks, the reason that these fader clocks exist is because it needs to give the lines a time for the redstone blocks to push over the next segment, and then it's going to instantly retract when it's done. So you have to make sure it goes all the way to the end with the extension before you do, do the retraction. So if you were to make this machine longer, like if you made it twice as long, you would need twice as much delay. So you would replace this with like a uh, just a longer version of this sort of timer. And that shouldn't 
mean any other changes in the machine. It's just a. Uh, it'll only restart the next TNT sequence, or the yeah, the next TNT when it's done with uh, with this timer here, which you would also need to make a bit longer. But that should be fairly easy. It should fit in here pretty nicely. So another requirement of this machine is that it, the whole thing needs to move forward. So once it's done doing its whole TNT sequence, <coughs> you just come back here and place a piston. I know it's kind of a ghetto arrangement, but uh, I wanted this to be as simple as I could possibly make it. So that's just going to move the whole machine forward and then wait for a certain amount of time for, for it to move. Then it's going to start running the trigger mechanisms. Now I'm in survival mode and I'm just going to try and run it like you would run it in real life. So I'm just going to move the, the machine forward once and then I can just fly along here and uh, there are my rockets. Yeah, then I can just look for the quartz and mine that out and then also come over and fill in these lava pockets. Which can be annoying. Uh, I should drink that. So, yeah, while you're waiting for the lava to dissipate, I guess you can go around and mine all the quartz out. Which can... It might, uh, it might be that you can, uh, like the time you spend digging out the quartz is enough time for the lava, lava to dissipate. I haven't really done a lot of testing. And if you made the machine wider than it is, uh, then you might not have so much of a problem with that. Because you would be spending more time going back and forth looking for quartz and mining. And that, yeah, that would give the lava more chance to dissipate. So, I'm really quite pleased with this, this design. I think it's really nice just to have this nice arc of TNT always blowing up and uh, predictably destroying certain blocks. So you end up with a real real nice slope here. And I think the, the slope that it creates it will be a pretty nice artifact when you come across it in later Minecraft time. Really like the uh, nice parabolic shape. But next I'm going to show another type of flying machine, a, a simpler one, that, uh, that won't end up with this nice clean area. But I'll just see how that works out in a second. So this here is a simpler version. I basically removed the bottom half of the machine, the uh, timer mechanism. And right now I've, uh, I've got a command block just to set to kill the TNT. And I'm just seeing where it lands. And I just cut this area out so maybe the TNT won't blow up some stuff over here. Should be safe. But this will be my first test of this in practice. So, works basically the same, except just do one press of that button to do the timer. And definitely don't spam it. I'll probably set up a better circuit than this. But yeah, the idea is that it launches the TNT out. Of course, you harvest all the quartz. And yeah, it's not going to give a nice clean blast pattern, but I'm just going to run this for a while and see what happens. So as I have it set up now, uh, yeah, you again, you manually uh, move it forward. Then you have to wait and just make sure everything is all the way over before you press the button. And it's not going to automatically launch the TNT for you. So like this sort of gives a parabolic shape to it because uh, the TNT kind of lands on these ledges here and then loses a little bit of momentum and like it's sort of parabolic but I have found that this leaves a bit of a mess around like you'll get floating blocks so if that's if you want it to look good when it's done it's really not gonna look good so after a bit more testing, I can pretty confidently say this is not a good version, the simpler version. Because every time after you press this button, you should really go down and mine all the quartz because the next TNT might land on that uh, the quartz that was just exposed. And basically this is a mess. It's really hard to fly through with an elytra. And you'll have to do it so many times because every time you press that button, you need to you need to check. So back to the first machine that I showed. 
I did a little bit of thinking about it, and I figured that the TNT blast pattern could be improved so that this cannot be operated much faster. So basically it's going to blow up one TNT up here. It's going to kind of clear a path for the next TNT. Then it's going to go from the bottom to the top. And the reason that I do that is because I the lava is less of a problem this way. So the lava flows are going to be created down there first instead of being created up here. Except in the cases where, like this one, Uh, so that should mean you can just move the entire machine forward every time. You don't have to press that button multiple times. So the uh, the timing mechanism is a bit more complicated, maybe. Uh, I had to kind of reverse the signal. Maybe I won't even try to explain this analog business here. It's uh, kind of hard to understand. Uh, but I don't have any hoppers and stuff like that with items. Like, you can pretty much just copy it from, like, an image like this. And you just know there's that sticky piston down here. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is these, uh, these obsidian lines, which they don't need to be obsidian. Uh, but you see that these, uh, these repeaters here, they're lined up exactly with these, uh, these limestone lines going down. And the reason for that is because if they get desynchronized, like this has one more repeater than this one, for instance, uh, like then the TNT will it might explode your machine. So you got to be really careful about that. Get the just I would actually build this using a schematic instead of trying to just look at it because it's really important that you get ever get everything right. And of course, I would also make a backup of your server before you even try it. So my conclusion on this project, I think it might be worth building. It might be easier just to build a normal tunnel bore, because you don't need all this timing stuff. And you'll still get a whole lot of quartz out of that. But this uh, this would be kind of a fun project, and Minecraft is all about fun. And I thought that the uh, variable timer is a nice concept to use for things like this. Um, it's pretty nice to just be able to use normal redstone stuff for variable timings instead of like a flying machine to do that. I would be hopeless at creating a flying machine with variable timings for this tunnel bore like machine, but I know it's possible. So if somebody wants to take up that challenge, I think that might be a fun project as well. And if you would like to build this kind of project, I think the first thing I would do is just build up one segment of this area, uh, like one TNT duper and launcher, and then also build up the timer. And before you even test it, I would uh, just break out these lines right here, uh, just to make sure that you got everything correct, uh, just so you can watch it running. And of course, make a, a backup of your server beforehand. And of course, when you're actually running this, uh, this new version with the different timings, uh, you shouldn't even have to press this button at all. You would uh, first clear out all the lava and all the quartz, like this. Uh, yeah, probably first clear out the lava so it can start flowing down, then clear out the quartz. That'll take you some time as well. And then all you would have to do is, is there lava down? No. Um, then all you would have to do is just run it again. You might not even have to wait for the lava to completely dissipate. Uh, the TNT blows up. This uh, netherrack has very low blast resistance, so it has a lot of tolerance. And there probably is more work that could be done on the timing mechanism. And if you want to test this using this uh, world download that I'll provide, uh, you can turn on this switch, and that's just going to prevent the TNT from exploding. So if your time mechanism isn't correct, you're not going to blow up the machine. It's really nice, and I'll just show the the uh, command for this. It's just execute as, then it uses the NBT selector, just for one S fuse time. You have to make sure you have the S there. 
then uh, kill that entity. And also, you might have noticed the armor stands moving around. I was using those to figure out the exact position. Like, uh, with this command right here, uh, command block output. So that's going to tell me exactly where the TNTs explode. Nice little thing you can do in an unmodded client. But I usually, of course, keep those off because it's pretty annoying. So I'll actually provide three world downloads in the description. Uh, this one will be the reverse timer because it does the TNT longest first. Uh, sorry, the uh, the lowest TNT first. And then I'll have like the normal one that I showed in the first part of the video. And then I'll have uh, the one that I don't think is even worth building where it just launches the TNT and it falls wherever. I guess the Swiss cheese kind of pattern. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.